So let's look now at a few ways in which polarization appears um, in uh, science and engineering. So first, uh, 3D glasses are kind of a nice example of how polarization works, right? So when you, you uh, go to certain kinds of movies and they give you those 3D glasses, what you're actually doing is your left eye and your right eye are basically covered with a lens that are called polarizers. Polarizers are basically um, structures that are going to allow linear polarizations of only one type through, right? So one of them may be set up to allow horizontal polarization. The other might be set up to produce only vertical polarizations. And if you have the right kind of screen and projector, you can basically create different linear polarizations reflecting off of some screen and your eye is basically looking at two different images. Your left eye and your right eye are seeing two different images. And that's how you can sort of synthesize three dimensions on a flat two-dimensional screen. Uh, and so simple example of a polarizer, this, this is just kind of how it works um, by screening out one type of polarization. There's also an interesting application that the um, honeybees use in order to navigate. And they use the fact that skylight is a little bit polarized. In particular, uh, if you are looking at the direction of the sun, let's say you're at the ground and wherever you are, you've got the sun pointed in a, in a, in a certain direction. Uh, if you draw a circle in the sky around the sun, in the blue sky, you're going to have polarization that sort of follows that circle. And so if you couldn't actually see the sun, but you had a, a set of polarized glasses or you could see polarization better, then you could figure out where the sun is and potentially based on time of day and season, you could actually navigate based on that structure. And it turns out that there are certain insects, in particular honeybees, that literally navigate using the fact that they can see polarization, whereas we humans cannot. We just see light and it all looks the same to us. Um, but for uh, certain animals, uh, uh, horizontal and vertical polarization looks slightly different to them. They can tell the difference. Uh, if you're curious about why the Skylight is polarized. It has to do with something called birefringence, um, which is a little bit beyond the scope of the course, but it's an interesting topic of, uh, of how skylight becomes um, polarized to begin with. And it has to do with uh, the way in which light interacts with some of the uh, um, atmospheric molecules and it gets into something called um, Rayleigh scattering. But uh, um, beyond this course, but if you take a class on a uh, sort of radar system, for example, you, you, may, you may cover this. Uh, let me show you a picture of a kind of antenna called a helical antenna, which is often used for certain types of satellite communications and uh, um, uh, a couple other things that I'll talk about in a second. But this is a weird kind of antenna if you take a look at it. And maybe you've seen antennas that look like this, but if you follow it, you'll see that there is a sort of spiral shape to the metal. And so this metal right here, this antenna is optimized intentionally to pick up certain radio waves that deliberately have a circular polarization or at least some ellipticity to it, some, some eccentricity to it. Uh, and so, in fact, it's going to distinguish right hand from left hand. So the antenna clearly is designed with a certain helical shape in mind. So let me, let me talk a little bit about why this matters. And we're gonna talk more about reflections in the next lecture, or at least give you a little bit of a background, but it turns out that uh, if you have, let's say, a, a, a surface, like a, you know, the, a, an ocean or a piece of metal or something like that, if you have a reflection of a radio wave off of that surface, then what you're doing is you're actually going to change the polarization with that reflection. So in other words, let's say you are trying to detect the signal from a GPS uh, satellite. Okay, You're building a GPS navigation system, and you're reliant on being able to detect the signal from GPS satellites, and then from the phase of that signal, you can sort of back out how far away you are from the satellite. You repeat that for several satellites and you can get a fix on your location. Because it turns out, uh, GPS satellite signals are intentionally circularly polarized. And the reason they do that is because the signal comes in with a certain polarization. When it strikes the ground, that polarization reverses. Right hand becomes left hand and left hand becomes right hand. And so whatever is coming down from the satellite the opposite polarization will be reflected upwards. Now let's think about why that's important. If you have a little GPS receiver right here, then you will have no choice in general but to detect both the direct signal from the satellite and the signal that bounces off the ground. It's a phenomenon called multipath. So let me draw 
this square over here. So here's your GPS receiver in green, right? And so you're simultaneously picking up two signals. There's a signal that bounces off the ground and comes directly to you, which will be left-hand circuitly polarized, for example. And there's also a signal that comes directly to the receiver without bouncing off the ground, which will be right-hand circuitly polarized. If you have an antenna that only picks out one specific type or one specific polarization, you'll be screening out the reflection off the ground. And that actually dramatically improves the accuracy of GPS. And so for that reason, it's very common in satellite communication systems to use circular polarizations as it gets rid of and very much mitigates this um, uh, multi-path effect, which otherwise can screw things up. All right, so that will conclude this video on polarization. Uh, in the next lecture, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about this process of reflection off of the ground and how that actually works for different types of materials.